For the past few years, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant, and Carl Pilkington have been meeting regularly for a series of pointless conversations. This is one of them. Testing. Is that all right? Hello, and welcome to the Ricky Gervais Show. With me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And the little round-headed buffoon that is Carl Pilkington. All right. What are you doing? I'll try calming gums down. We well, don't do it with water. What do you do it with? You're trying you to do calm your gums down. You do it with meditation and hard drugs. <laughs> What's the problem with your gums? When I'm stressed out, my teeth now. What? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Say that again. When I'm sort of stressed out, my, my gums and my teeth now before I do. It's like a weakness. So what's up? You've got a toothache then? Mm. I thought you went to the dentist. I did, the other week. Well, what's wrong with your teeth then? It's just because you're stressed. I don't know. Why don't are you know. stressed? What have you got to be stressed about? I don't know. That's, that's, what, that's what's weird with stress, isn't it? No. Your body can be stressed without you realising. That's what no, kills you're stressed. people. No, you're stressed. No, 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 no. You're stressed because you feel stressed and then your body gets weak because you're... No, because I'm pretty good. I, don't, I never feel stressed. That's part of my problem. It's not I am problem. stressed, but I don't know about it. That's well, why that's it's, making a, sense at all. it's number one killer. <laughs> <laughs> what? What do you, you, you never get stressed. If you don't feel stressed, how are you stressed? But you must be stressed if you're right. telling It's like you're saying, stressed. I didn't feel like I had a pain, but apparently I did. Listen. Go on. I was in Israel recently. I had a bag put over my head, chucked in the back of the van. Now, the thing is, I kind right. of thought, well... It wasn't isn't... a blind date, by the way, and he wasn't being <laughs> um, arrested or kidnapped. It was a, it was a training thing, wasn't it, for yes, kidnapped situations? Yes, but I didn't know. I didn't know. What, you didn't know they were going to do it? Brilliant. No, they don't tell me anything, do they? So, so what the... happened then? So the thing is, that happened... I had a panic on a little bit. Afterwards, they took the bag off. I realised everything was all right. I was calm. My body was shaking. And that's what that they're saying to you. That doesn't make any sense. My body, as far as my body was concerned, it had just been kidnapped. Right. But I knew I hadn't. The, you know the bag they put over your head? Was it like a tennis racket cover? What, what shape was it? You sure they just didn't go and thought, oh, I thought I'd just bought the world's biggest orange. <laughs> Do you ever get recognised much? Yeah, now and again. But I haven't done anything of any worth, however. It's almost like recognising a neighbour or something, because they sort of go, it's him. And then the other one might go, what's he do? No, I don't know. It's not like I've done something... Right, of any worth. Of any worth, yet. yeah. I think you're forgetting all those emails I pass on to you for those people that have had traumas in their lives. You know, the earthquake victims, there's people that have lost relatives or had, you know, terrible life-threatening diseases, and they say the podcast got them through. Doesn't that warm the cockles of your heart? Uh, well, normally it's, it's gone straight to you, hasn't it, and you just forward it me on, so it's, it's almost like spam to me. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't feel as special, because it's like, here you go, look at this, you know. Unbelievable. I've watched the World Cup a few times with Ricky. The last time we qualified, we were doing um, a project, and we were uh, we watched it together in a hotel room. But of course, in the hotel room, it was just like a big bed. So we sat on the bed together, and we thought that was a bit intense. So I put a line of pillows down. But I don't understand what. To my, it, he was put a line of pillows between us. Now he knows I'm not going to jump on him. No, I know. He's not going to jump on me. No. But he's still terrified that some kind of like some kind of paparazzi is going to sort of parasend down the building and peer in and take a photo of us. And that's before we've got time to explain that we're just watching the football. We're it's already printed going, well, this is clearly evidence of their game. Yeah. There's no way that they could possibly be sat on a bed just as friends. No, but hold on, though. Why were we naked? Why didn't we just <laughs> put some trousers on? But I seem to remember that you, even though it was my room, you forced me to sit in the chair. It was one of those really uncomfortable box chairs. I said, it's weird. I can't get excited. We're having a beer, OK? So now we're drinking. Now we're drinking in bed, on the bed. No, no, no. We had our clothes on. We're on the bed watching football. But I couldn't go. Come on, England, with a little man sitting next to me in bed. Not a little man at all. No, big man. And so I just thought, let's pop the pillows down. That wasn't enough. I said, Steve, I can't do this. I can't. I can't watch football with a man on a bed. I said, so. Go in the chair, and he sat. So I sat in his chair, which is, if you're a man of my size, those tiny little crappy hotel box chairs are no good. It's 90 bloody minutes plus the interview. It was my room. I was furious. I felt like I was, um, uh, uh, like 
an old rich man just waiting to die, and my little manservant used to come and sit and watch football with me <laughs> exactly, in the last yeah. days <laughs> the last of days. my time. Carl, would you sit on a bed, right, with Stephen in a hotel room, right, watching football? Okay, you're pouring, you're pouring each other wine and beer and champagne. <laughs> Well, no, there wasn't that music playing. There was the roar of the crowd and John Motson doing commentary. It wasn't, <laughs> it's not a sexy sound at all. What do you think, Carl? Um. Someone said, I'll oh, come to my room. We're watching football. You got there and he went. Da, da, da. Well, who was on the bed well, that's first? Not what happened. Who was on the bed first? Well, he probably got up to answer the door. So he. So, I don't know. I came in. I thought, well, there's only a bed here. We sat down. We thought, yeah. No, but it wasn't. It was a chair there. So. Well, yeah, but you know full well that if you're in a room with Ricky, he's the one who's going to leap straight on the bed and demand that you... I just turn a chair. Well, why would you be concerned with lying on a bed yeah. next to me? What's up with that? It's a bit weird, isn't it? Why, why is it weird? I don't understand this. Because... I've changed for you. It's a bit weird lying on a bed with a mate, just watching football. Yeah, you don't do that when you go around the house, do you? Yeah, you but it's because you have a sofa and things. We didn't have that in the Yeah, room. but when you visit someone in hospital, you don't say, move over. You, pop, you don't pop yourself down next to him, you sit on the chair next to No, because to you're not there in a relaxed situation for 90 minutes enjoying a game of sport. It's a, it's, it's a more formal environment. Because you're quite a sport fan, aren't you, Carl? Yeah, but not in... Um, <clears throat> I don't like getting into things too much because mm. it can well, only be true. disappointing. I've never seen him get into anything. No. To be quite honest. No, I am a football fan, but I've got in, I've got I've got it now to a point where if they lose, it only bothers me for about half an hour. Yeah. And then I move on because mm. the thing is, I'm not in control of it. There's nothing I can do to alter that no. that team. If I could go in and say, "Listen, you're lazy. You get your finger out. You move up front," but it's different. But it's totally. It's like getting annoyed with nature. There's nothing you can do. So let it happen. Watch it if you want. But don't get annoyed about it. Because it's totally out of your hands. Interesting yeah. that Carl's team tactics also sounds like he could be directing a gay porn. <laughs> okay. You get your finger out. You get up front. <laughs> You're lazy. <laughs> It's amazing. Uh, what do you think of these people, though? I love it that everyone's a, an expert. Everyone's a pundit. You see these fat people in pubs going, well, he's lost a few yards up front. Yeah, he would be great. You fucking score a goal then, fatty. Mm. Wearing a football top. Yeah. I hate that. Exactly, yeah. They shouldn't make them for them. They shouldn't make them in that size. <laughs> it should be one size only. If you're fit enough to play football, you can wear one. If you're a fatty, you're not. <laughs> He looks ridiculous anyway. But what's that? That's what he was talking about. So you were a big fat slob with his belly out in an England shirt going, I could score from there. Go on then, let's have a go. If Fat Bob in the pub, mm. he's got his football top on. Mm, just. He gets all annoyed mm. when England, you know, lose. Yeah. What difference does it make? What difference does it make if they lose there or lose in the final? Well, I'll What's the point? Well, I'll tell you what difference it makes. I knew a fat Bob, OK? That wasn't his name, but I'm changing the name to protect the innocent. And him. And he's not innocent, right? Was it Fat Dave? It was a big fat bloke, right? And he worked on one of the crews um, that used to bring in equipment where he used to work at the Students' Union, OK? And uh, he, was, he was massive, right? And uh, I think it was 1992, the Euro, right, when England got knocked out and he went mental. And he was so angry, he went out and he wanted retribution, OK? Luckily, there were no German people around, but the closest he, he could find was a sausage van. Some poor bloke <laughs> who delivered sausages and he turned it over. He got the van and he turned it over because it was selling sausages, so he thought, that's German enough. No, well, if he's fat, he's probably just annoyed that it wasn't open. <laughs> I think I first became really excited by the World Cup, that famous year when Maradona did the handball. Do you remember what was that, 1986? 86. Yeah. Oh, that was so yeah. exciting. Because obviously he'd been so brilliant in that tournament. And then he did cheat, as we all know. Yeah. Isn't cheating part of, part of all games now? Hang on, here oh, we go, this on. is controversial. There's a lot of young people who look up to Carl as a role model. Yeah. Yeah, but it's the world we live in now, isn't it? It's, uh get what you can, how you can. But what's your feeling? Are you the sort of person, I mean, have you ever cheated in a game? Are you that sort of person? Um, I just think my dad does it a lot. Um, what, in board games and that? Yeah, just, just cards. Monopoly. Um, how does he cheat in Monopoly? Just nicks a lot of the money. 
I'm just straightforward next to money. I hadn't thought of that. Yeah. I love that. But how do you not notice even doing it? Because I'm understand. busy looking at, you know, what properties I've, I've invested in and sure. stuff. And the money's just there, isn't it? So I don't see the point of cheating. No, I don't. I say that to him. I say, you're kidding yourself. You're kidding yourself. But to him, it, he's, he's broke the system, hasn't he? He's got round the rules. What do you mean I can only have that much? Who says I can? Bosh. Get some more money. Buy some more hotels. And in a way, that's life, isn't it? Mm. All people with loads of money now, you kind of go, have they made that honestly? Right. You know, I pass big houses in London and I think, gangsters, got to be gangsters to have a house like that. Yeah. There's no way a normal job, someone who's... Because I know, I'm trying to make money. And I know how hard it is to make money. Because the more money you make, the more hands are out there, taking little bits. So how the hell has this man bought this house? It's got to be a crook. <laughs> so do you yourself cheat? Would you consider yourself a cheater? Are you honourable? In games. Well, just generally, do you cheat on anything? No, do you know what? The other week, I'd had a cup of tea and some fish and chips mm. at this pub, and they only took for one. And I went back the next day and said, oh, you didn't charge me for the fish and chips. What a fucking moron. I paid. No, I didn't tell her about the tea, then. <laughs> <laughs> Got a free tea? A free tea, yeah. I just thought, well, you know, it's pretty good that I've gone back to pay for that. How much is a tea bag? Mm. The water's free. Yeah. I'll have that for free. So that, again, that's just me. It's like the Mars bar and the paper round. Mm. It's me going, well, I've been good. The fish would have cost money. Potatoes are pretty cheap, but I'll pay for it. But for my goodness, it's a little gift. Have a free cup of tea. <laughs> if she was good at her job, she'd have remembered. I thought she would have done. In a way, it annoyed me that she didn't go, oh, yeah, so you did. Well done. Thank you very much for coming back. Right. She just was like, did you? Not she looked at me. I she, looked like, she looked at me like we didn't even know. Yeah. I was worrying about a staff member. Getting sort fired of getting done yeah. or having to pay for it. You I know, know where you're coming at there. One of my first disappointments with football, I was um I was ten years old, okay? And uh one of the teachers was um in charge of the football team, my junior school. And uh I went down to Tutty's, it was, in the shop in Reading with my mum. So it's, it's white socks, black shorts, white shirt. Uh, got that. Went to knocked on his door. I said, uh, I've got my kit. He went with the trials were yesterday. He missed it. That was it for a year. Right? Next year, I uh, wear the trials were well. Got the trials, okay? He was going, everyone, I want to give it 100%. Right? Really try hard, really try hard. He's watching people play, right? I made sure that every time I ran by him, I was out of breath. Huh? <sighs> Like, really trying. Every time I'm him, he's sort of looking at me. I think, yeah, right. Came to it, he said, the team is this, I'm left out, right? He went past me and he went, you've clearly got asthma. <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't make that team either? Yeah, and I didn't, and and, uh, and I vowed that day, never try hard to anything. Yeah, well, you've certainly kept that up. Yeah. What's your thoughts on that, Carl? Will you play, do you play sport at school? Um, a little bit, but it was never taken seriously at school anyway. It was, I think the PE teacher was a geography teacher as well. So it's like, you know, what yeah. does he know? It was all that. Basically, he put some tracksuit pants on that were always too tight for him. He'd see everything. But what were you looking at? Did you couldn't help it. It was in the days when clothing was tight as it is. Mm. And then it was like lycra tracky bottoms. Oh, right. And everyone used to say, look and stay at home. But, like he's uh, stealing sausages from It was ridiculous, Londis. ridiculous. Uh, so he didn't know what he was doing anyway. If, if anything, it was dangerous, because he didn't know what was what was the capability of a 10-year-old kid's body. He put you through loads of stuff. Right. He didn't like me anyway, because he wasn't that good. If you're not that good, teachers don't like I you. I thought you'd be pretty good. I wasn't interested, that's the thing. I did right. relay, and I got done for swearing. Got whacked on the arse with a baton. Hold on, what, what, why were you swearing in Relay? When, when did that come into it? When did you need to swear in Relay? You're running round, aren't they? Because the lads swearing. didn't slow down, so I couldn't pass it on, so I sort of said, I can slow down. And then he heard me, and then went mental at me. But yeah, so it was never... I mean, Darren Campbell, the, the, the athlete, I've told you, I don't know that I was involved in his, his training. No. Didn't know about this. Yeah, Darren Campbell, the, uh, I think he won a gold medal. Didn't he used to push you around in a bath or something? Well, it's not the last of the summer wine. <laughs> It was, um, it was in my go-kart. 
Right. And you used to, it was a motorised go kart, and you had to like pick it up at the back, run with it at speed, and then drop the wheels down. Well, no, we should explain, for people who don't know, he was the bloke who used to push the bobsleigh in the Winter Olympics, wasn't he, for the England team? No, he was a, he was a runner. Well, how was that part of his training then, pushing the fucking go kart? What was he doing? Because it's running. But he's running about a yard. No, no, sometimes more than that, quite a lot. And it's just, uh, God, what do you want? It's Darren Campbell pushing me go-kart. Yeah, you seem to be taking half the credit for his gold medal. All you've done is sat on your arse, you lazy twat. I just kind of think he was, he was at the age where it's important. He could have made a decision not to go into it at that point. And I think he was never keen to get in the go-kart. Yeah. He was always keen to push it. And I used to let him. Now, if I said, no, I don't want you pushing me go-kart, who knows? I'm just saying I was there at the start. Doing nothing. Providing nothing. Sitting on your arms. Sitting around. Well, letting if, someone if, else all right, do it. What athletes have you helped? <laughs> You've not helped him. I bet if he ever did a book, an autobiography, he'd go, they, in the early years, Aaron Campbell. No, I want to know if he has done an autobiography, because we're going to be looking this up. I remember the train. I'm making a note of that for the next weather. time we do anything. Around that Pilkington's. Darren Campbell. Pushing a go-kart. Pushing bold in crap. Cheap. It wasn't go-kart. 120 quid it was. You know how many paper rounds that is? What I like when um, you're watching football on the television is if it goes to a close-up of a footballer, it's just kick the ball out, Mr. Gar is gone for a free kick or whatever. If you stay on any footballer for more than 10 seconds, they will either swear or gob. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's a fact. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never needed to gob that much. It's I don't care how knackered I am, I'm never gobbing like that. It's weird, though. The other week, I just sat in the garden, slavering. <laughs> just to see if it would ever run out. And it's amazing. I don't know where it all comes from. What is the that's strangest? Extraordinary. That's extraordinary. That's amazing. Just so to that, see if it would run so out. So now he's got to the point in his life where, a, as a hobby or a pastime or just to count down the minutes before he dies, yeah. he sat in the garden creating sputum, slavering to see if he'd ever run out. I mean, that's amazing. Well, where does it all come from? Well, you create it, don't you? But from what? I'm always getting done for not drinking enough water. Salivary glands. But it's amazing. Honestly, I just sat like that with my head forward and just let it drip. <laughs> Fuck wow. me! So Susan that comes into the garden like all she sees is her patient. boyfriend sat like something from one of the cuckoo's nest. Yeah, like dribbling. battered around the head with a cricket bat. No, she was she Did, was she, did you answer she was back to a dictator? Yeah. What did he do? Battered me. But You've I'd... got a trench up your ass as well. Yeah, that makes me slather. No, just sat there. What a fucking That's mom. extraordinary. What, what a div you are. And I just had my head there and it continuously... I think I got bored of it before it stopped. <laughs> oh, God! I have never heard anything like this! Oh, God! It's unbelievable! He just sat there with his head down, slavering, Letting it just That's produce. Extraordinary. You weren't even sort of like gobbing. You were just, no, just letting, letting it, letting it sort of drop. So you, you got... you've got nothing else going on in your life, but you've got time to do this. So your brain wasn't even engaged. How long were you there for? I tell you what, no joking. Probably a good fifteen minutes. <laughs> With his head forward, Amazing. letting him salivate onto the grass. But do you reckon you could do that amount? I would well, never, do never, try. never, would do never try. Never do it. I'd never try. I'd never have that amount of time. I've never. I've. Ne I, I tell you now, you will never see either of us sat there for no reason in the garden with our head forward and our mouth open, seeing how long we can create saliva. Unless I've just come out of a coma. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or a gas attack. Yeah. No, I have a lot of, uh, I'm sort of Goz Unlimited. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great new dance duo! <laughs> Please welcome to the stage, it's Goz Unlimited! Amazing. Uh, what do you think about George Best using up his liver, then getting another one and getting pissed at him? Clever. Well, that's always going to encourage it, isn't it? I've always said that. 
What? The moment we can replace stuff, people just go, oh, sod it. Like what smokers. would you do if you gave someone a kidney and then, with it. and they started just yeah. sort of the pub again, doing drugs and shit and... Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't hand it out to someone just, just like that, would I? I think you should be allowed to say, right, who's it for? Can I meet them? Right. And then have a chat with them. Right. Saying, have you learnt your lesson? Well, I'm going to do it. Okay, okay. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a little um, kid who wants a, a kidney. Okay. Um, and you come to me. I'm, I'm at the top of the list. Hello. 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 How are you doing? Good. Are you going to give me one of your kidneys so I can live? I don't know. Um... Well, I'm at the top of the list. So, why is your head so round? Right, so definitely not. Why? Definitely He's a little not. kid. Look He's at a him. Little kid. Pale. No, I need, I need a kidney. He's cheeky, though, isn't he? No, cheeky. please, Lovely please, kid. round head. Can I have a, your kidney? No, you can't. Oh, have come it. on, right, you've got let's two. Let's see another kid. Let's see another kid. No, Less I'm the top. Learn. I'm Less top of the fucking list. Give me one of your kidneys, you round-headed twat. No, I would not feel bad about walking away from that kid and saying you can not have a kidney. So you're gonna, you're gonna. Do you know what? I'm gonna take this kidney out and bin it. <laughs> Hey, wait, do you know who that kid went on to become? Go on. Winston Churchill. Right, well, maybe I helped. It's like Darren Campbell all over again. I made him stronger. I was tough with him. He saw how tough the world is. No, but he didn't. It, this is an alternative universe where he died because you never gave him that kidney. Yeah. Eh, well, you can't worry about that then, can you? If you're gonna, if you're gonna start going that far back and forward and stuff. But I think... It, I don't know what I'd expect someone to be like. Just want them to go, what do you eat? I'd, I'd say, write down your diet. Oh, yeah, I, I, I'm going to really, I'm going to treasure this kidney. I'm going to treasure it. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I'm going to really work hard and I'm going to make something like more than you did. So I'll, uh... So my, this, your kidney is going to be a lot better off for me than you, you lazy tosser, I'll tell you that. If you want, if you want oh, achievement, okay. then, uh, you know, I'm going to go to school, I'm going to do really well. Then, like you, you thick little round-headed shit. So the quicker you get the fucking kidney out of your Eustace body and into mine, we'll all be happy, won't we? Okay. Well, I'll, I'll go away and think about it for a month. Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Don't have to get nasty. Sick of it. I'm always helping people out. Uh, That's a big ask, isn't it? Would you give anyone a kidney, Carl? Suzanne. I'm sure he would give Suzanne tricky. a kidney. It's tricky. Well, you obviously you'd give Suzanne a kidney, wouldn't you? Yeah. Uh, well, would you or are you just saying that? I suppose I would. I don't really like the idea of it. So if what you're saying what are you saying to Suzanne right now? Bit of good luck. Oh, you know I need a kidney. And it's got quite rare. Well, we've got the same sort of blood group and everything, so uh Yeah, you've got two. I've got none. Bibbidi Bob, one each. Let's have a good life. Yeah? I don't know. Uh, yeah, you'll have to, uh, have to have it. Which one are you thinking of going for? Because the, uh, I think the right one's a bit dodgy because they had the kidney stones. Well, you keep that. I'll have, that have, one? I'll have the left one. No, I'll, I'll tell you what, you have that one because when I was in all the pain, you were going, it can't be that bad. So you have it. Mm. It's in good working order, they've looked at it. Yeah. But it is prone to stones. <laughs> Is to get back at her. <laughs> it can't be that bad. It's like poetic justice. He can give her the kidney she didn't believe was that painful. Don't like talking about it. It's all uh, it freaks me out. It freaks me out. It's all doing stuff now. The kidney's doing stuff. Yeah. My teeth are hurting still. Still got a little bit of toothache going on there. Mm. I've got a sweat on. All stuff's going on without me knowing. Germs within round. I've had jabs for rabies. I've had hepatitis A and B. I don't even know what that does. <laughs> I've had A and I've had B. That's whizzing round my body. Body's in shock, innit, at the moment. It doesn't know what's going on. I've had, uh... How is it notifying you of the shock? Well, I think, I, I, like I say, I keep getting this sweat. And, uh What else have I had? Typhoid. <sighs> doesn't that... Shouldn't, all this stuff shouldn't be in my body, should it? And we don't really know, do we? They're saying, yeah, have this, have that, shove it in your arm, it's all right. But we don't really know. Long-term effect. I've got rabies in me. I never thought I'd have to have that. Tetanus. TB. One for it for getting bit by a dirty monkey. <laughs>